Hey everybody, welcome to another production breakdown uh, of a song that I wrote many years ago. Uh, we did uh, the first one a few weeks ago. It was for lead and people seem to enjoy that. So, and a lot of people asked for this song. And so there was um, uh, only one person I had in mind, uh, obviously when we decided to do Ruby uh, that, you know, so many years ago and that was Warren. Oh, yeah, obviously Warren, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I mean, it's your Zoom session, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, um, we did this song. This was like my first album and, uh, you know, getting you on board as a producer, I think was like the first win. And it happened very seamlessly. I think uh, my ex-boss, Varun Dugirala, who was oh, like kind of eavesdropping on a conversation I was having with Krish Bakija said, uh, hey, if you guys want Warren to produce, I can just call Uttara and ask. And like literally, we were just like, uh, yeah, okay, cool, do it. And he, he made that call like immediately. I think you were also there in the car. You guys were in a car mm-hmm. or someplace. And Uttara was like, yeah, he's right here. I'll just ask him. And I was like, yo, this is way too much pressure. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, and then just uh, you happen to say yes. Do you have any good reason for why you said yes? Because I know you don't produce too many artists generally. Uh, I mean, and also you didn't hear the song, so I had no idea. Did, did, had I heard your voice at that time? Uh, probably, I think Uttara may have shared something. I'm not sure. Yeah, she she probably would have, and then it, it probably you know something clicked, and I was like, cool, I, I like this guy's vibe or whatever. And then it was like, oh, okay, I can. Thanks. I can That's what that. I was waiting for. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing is, when you're <laughs> when you're producing and and mixing and stuff, you gotta to listen to the song again and again. So it's like it better be worth it. Ah, but if you're gotcha. Get on it. You just go play, and then the next day it's a good chance you kind of forgot in the song. Also. Yeah, that's fair enough. No, good point. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, the story of this album, uh, which uh, came out November fifth of um, two thousand and fourteen, we recorded in August, and I remember it very distinctly. Being like the, I I thought that you know because we jammed the album in three days and we tracked it in three days, so it was like a six or seven days mostly. And I was just thinking at that point, I was just like, oh. All albums are this easy to make. I'll make like six <laughs> albums. <laughs> and then I the next. Short, I think it was shorter. Our actual recording time, I think we had four days, if I'm not mistaken. And then there was some time to mix it and do Yeah, it yeah we mixed it over the course of like, I'd say September, uh, August, September. Yeah. And yeah. then. I, uh, I took it home and, or did I mix it at. No, contrast. you mixed it at home because I remember coming over to your place and, and going over it, the tracks with you. That's right, because it's still on my drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We're just lucky you had this uh, session because I have the stems that you gave. Well, not even stems. I just have the audio files, you know, like all the history of the files. Yeah, um, and the, yeah I mean, I, it's also a Cubase file, which I don't have. So I was like, you're the only person I can actually go to to do this. So, um, hey, we're going to... Um, go through some of the, 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 the stems or the tracks that we have here. Um, and you have gone through it after a really long time. I've actually still not been able to hear just the individual tracks, but you have, is there anything really different from like, or is there anything really interesting that you found about these tracks that you recorded uh, so long ago that you're like looking at now and just hearing back? I'm, I'm kind of uh, pleasantly surprised upon how, how it still holds up. Uh, though I I wish we could have like maybe had the tools that I have now at that time just to you know make it sound a little because uh, I did a remix on it using what I've got now. Yeah. And to me, it sounds a little you know, you know deeper, wider, whatever you want to call it. Right. But I wish we had some of those toys back then. I think we were working on a kind of a limited. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it it was that, and it was also just like it was a pretty quick assignment overall. You yeah, know, like it was very it was, quick. And, and it wasn't like just this one song. How many we do? We, like we did five? five. We did five songs. Yeah. yeah. So it was like this was just one of those five songs. So I didn't really have like an entire day to sit and you know. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. just the the other thing that is kind of interesting about this, which has changed like vastly from the way we make songs now, at least for for pages and stuff like that, mm-hmm. is um, is that this was like pretty like old school, you know, bare bones, like in the sense that it's it's guitars, bass, drums. Uh, yeah. acoustic I mean, guitar and vocals to... yeah and we tracked all of it together which i also found like again i also thought then i was like oh track all the instruments together great i'll make eight albums uh this Just way from experience that's the quickest way of doing it because you know if you actually do each instrument by itself you're yeah. you're taking that much more time like a five minute take 
will actually take you an hour if you <laughs> you know, separate everything. So this was like the most you know way, best way of conserving time and getting also everyone to edit what they were doing at that time because yeah. it like something wasn't working while you were playing together. You, you could hear it and you could just change it on the fly. And you've also, I mean, you still do that for Black Side Blues, I guess, right? Like you track most, most of the time, yeah. There are there are exceptions to that, but as far as possible, I try and capture uh, at least the basic track before you do your overdubs. Has to be like at least you know some amount of like, gel in it. But in this case, also like the, I think we had a bass amp in the room. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And so you can hear the bass amp, and I'm not <laughs> sure about the guitar amp. We may have like parked it in one side of the studio. Yeah. But if I just uh, play you a bit of the drums, you can kind of hear the. There's this rumble of the bass amp in the background. Yeah, you can hear that. I play you yeah. the softer bits. Yeah. Yeah. It's more apparent there. And even in the overheads. There and in the room mic. That room I could have actually. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can pick it up most in the room. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of you know if you get the bleed to sound good, it it works in your favor because it makes everything sound a little bigger. Yeah, you've always said that like uh, there's something that you said even back then, which is like it kind of makes the glue of the like song yeah. kind of makes everything kind of sit together well. Puts you know? everything in the same sonic space. Otherwise, what you have to do is judiciously send everything to the same reverb, just bits of it. Which I I do now with a plugin called Ocean Wave Reverb, but okay. uh, just actually capturing it in in the mics, it it just makes things a little right. It gives them more space and depth. So the thing I I uh, I think I remember most uh, about this song is that you used an electric twelve string guitar. If that's if I'm not mistaken, yep. right? Yeah, so I think that was the most insane kind of thing about uh, this song because I was just like, okay, cool. Ruby is a song that I've you know wrote maybe in two thousand and ten, and it was an acoustic song, you know, uh, primarily, and obviously because I didn't have a band back then, and this was the beginning. This album was the beginning of of my my band and stuff. And so when you bust out that twelve string, I was like, okay, cool. I don't know where where I'm going to be going with this music, uh, but yeah, man, that was like just unique sounding and i don't think i've ever had to kind of i never used one or seen one actually since then <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah i thought we could just hear that part back because there's a neat little solo between uh, yeah one and chorus two i thought we'd just listen to that yeah sure so this is your uh, 12 string track here it's kind of panned all the way to one side yeah, yeah. because i think your acoustic is on the other side or something yeah. it's like a counter so I'll, I'll tell you what actually, let me put on drums, bass on this 12 string, it's kind of interesting. I'm very like, Eagles kind of uh, yeah. guitar part of it. You know, like, it's gorgeous, yeah, I love it. I learned that from Lion Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> It's also, often also in the higher register, it kind of yeah. really... And here comes nicely. that solo. Yeah. It looks like there's a tiny punch in that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Or I may mean, have just clipped a, a bit of noise out. I think it may have been the same take. Let me just check the take numbers. Oh, uh, just to... Oh no, this yeah. is many, oh, many this takes starts. later. No, no, this 34. is 34 and this is 43. And there's something in between as well. This is... Uh, just ah, that's also 43. That's, a, yeah, that's probably it, a punch or something. This, no, this is basically taking that uh, the, volume, the up, volume down. Or, <laughs> or moving that note a little bit. Gotcha, so it's the same yeah. take, but this is like too hard. It's kind of weird. Right? It's like a small... So do mystery. you do like uh, audio bends and like, do you do you have like a, like a flex tool if you change your parts or yeah. like... I, I can do that. I mean, yeah. there's a thing called Vary Audio here. If you can right, do. yeah. It's the same on PreSonus. Like, there's a bend tool for, like, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Which I used to back... I, I, don't, I don't use it too often. You're saying, yeah. sorry? You know, no, I was just saying, <laughs> I, I have to use it because my timing really sucks. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, like, back in, the, back in the day, you would have to, like, just chop, 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 and then just kind of adjust according to... You know, slip and... here, there's this clock, and right. you can... The entire uh, delay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
so sometimes when i i find like if the track is like sitting too like tightly on the beat or if it, it even is rushing you can just pull it back a little you did bit. that to literally all my guitars on make it happen <laughs> i think <laughs> you pushed all of it you just like it's fine just let it sit a little bit better yeah. and i was just like yeah okay that actually makes a huge difference because it's not always when if it's exactly on the grid it sounds a little too like like mechanical uh, i don't know sometimes it doesn't work it, but it yeah. also depends on the 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 bass and drums if they are kind of like pushing yeah and you know just to line up with that it's kind of like a trial and error thing sometimes it it can go either way sometimes i need to nudge it ahead as well if it's right. like the guy is like too relaxed for whatever reason <laughs> just no for it. sure yeah then move it by yeah earlier uh, another yeah. thing about this song which i uh, i actually love and has become pretty iconic for when we played is adil's bassline uh, yeah. in the verse Um, world, yeah, I think you. I remember I had that conversation you you had with him. You were just like maybe you know try and find like a more melodic like walking kind of thing, and it yeah. just came out really nicely. I I think he already had that. Do 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 something um, like that. Yeah. What I remember telling him is you know when it starts to go to the five. Exactly, on, on, I remember that one also yeah. very clearly. Because yeah, you your guitar part is it's a four and a one. It's a four and a one. Yeah. You know, but the moment you put that, and then there's an ascending kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Now it goes to the six minor, and back to the yeah. five. The five is a, a there. It's like a the one over the five. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Interesting, Diana. Maybe you can remember this. Why, why do we have two guitar? Tracks I'll tell you why. <laughs> I do remember. I think, and I swear to God, this may be the first time I'm admitting it, but I think one guitar is out of tune. <laughs> okay. And. Acoustic guitar, DI, and acoustic guitar stereo. Did we stereo mic it? Yeah, we did stereo guitar? mic it after the fact. So the DI is what we tracked, I think, probably during the the live recording of it, or maybe not. I'm not yeah, sure. They're actually two separate takes. I think you double track the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I can kind of hear the 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 stereo mic thing panned yeah, a little to the. But they are two separate takes. There's no like. Even when, even, <laughs> It's not two mics on the same guitar for sure, right? Yeah. No, there's one DI and one stereo mic. Okay. So oh, that's what you've used to create the stereo? No, no, the there is one stereo track. Oh, there's a stereo there. track itself. There's a two. But, okay, gotcha. But it it got panned all the way one side for some reason. Okay. And the DI okay. was on the other side. Like if you if you uh, send that stereo track uh, to the center. Can you see it's a bit right heavy? Yeah, it is right heavy. So I was like, okay, fine, just send it all the way to the right, and use this as the left counter, and it worked yeah. out quite well. You get all this. Yeah. But I remember that one guitar being like really out of like tune, not out of tune, not really out of tune, but it was yeah. like kind of out. But we were just like, cool, we just add another guitar, make it sound like chorusy, and it like chorusing effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and then it works. Have yeah. you ever heard a band called Big Head Todd and the Monsters? No, I haven't. Okay, you you may like them, but it's got a similar kind of a guitar sound. Um, okay. Let me find the song. A nice band. It always reminded me of like early zero before we oh, became nice. like a, a rock band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah oh, man. Um. So yeah, that was that part. And this, I uh, wanted to hear Adil's that that walking like that Based line. Like yeah. Once. Let me put that on. Where is it? Oh, oh, sorry. He comes in. I think uh, it's on the later. first verse. Yeah, yeah in the when beginning of the verse. Comes, right? Yeah. Here we go. That's your bass EQ, by the way. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh wow! This is a, like a big. Uh, uh, oh, there's boost a lot of that. No, this one or two can see. Yeah, no. So yeah, that's around two hundred and seventy something. Just because I take out all that low mid from the kick drum and then I put it back on the bass, so they sit together. Like ah, that. guys, this is a lesson for me also. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> without so without your EQ, can you hear this? Yeah. I mean, it sounds fine, but but also his uh, his bass. I don't know. I can't remember what he may have been using. He may have been using the Squire. Um, it's, it's but it's got a really nice top end to it. That's the really player, nice yeah. ring to it. It's the player more than the instrument. Yeah, probably that. This is another very useful plugin. Ah, oh, I remember this one. Yeah, this this wonders to the bass, especially the chorus. The chorus, yeah. I, I remember that. It a wider, 
It's like a one-stop shop for all things. I, you know, I've always put a chorus on my bass ever since you told me that, like just to kind of make it like a fatter sounding or whatever. But yeah, it definitely adds that uh, to it. For me, I think it's that Duff McKagan thing. He always had a chorus on his bass, remember? Oh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I've not thought about it, but probably. His bass is such an integral part of uh, GNR. Mm-hmm. You know, just the growling thing. Like you hear it, you know, like, okay, it's GNR. It's nice. like a very distinctive nice. sound. Anyway, uh, apart from the bass, uh, <laughs> remember these uh, tambourine and shaker overdubs? Yeah. Um, Who did that? Did Al do it? Probably Al did it, yeah. yeah Al he, was, he, was, he was cornering the, the percussion department <laughs> at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's some integral stuff that he's done on this yeah. record, particularly on, like, songs like uh, The Next Best Thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so much faith we had in him that we hard panned his percussion to one side and kept the acoustic on the other side of the beginning of that song. But yeah, uh, but yeah, shake of eye, no, solo the shake, or just the cheeky, yeah. cheeky, cheeky. This is a classic. Right. Yeah, I did get the job done. I know, of just course. A little bit of it on the on the pre-chorus and then the wow. tambourine on the. Uh, what else is there? There is a. There is a B3 that comes in at the end, which is really nice. That's the best one. Yeah, that's yeah. like one of my favorite parts. Of so it. I'll put um, that, just the B3 and the... And I think we were playing around with that speed of the, the rotary speed. The rotor, yeah. yeah. So it sounds slow right now, but you can kind of hear it ramp up at one point. I think this is the, the record on which I found that. You know, it makes a huge <laughs> difference. Okay. Just waiting for it to come. There you go. Yeah. You can hear that speed up. I'll just play it one yeah, more. It sounds so pretty good. cool, huh? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and we, we actually punched that. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been like really like into getting it exactly right or something. But it does sound cool. So no, maybe, it's, yeah. you know, it's my only regret sometimes playing this song as a, as a trio See, a lot of the times. Yeah, it's just that missing that rotor. Final take on, on this whole thing, right? It's like take 15. So after we've done 12 <laughs> and 15, like it's we just, oh, Let's just get that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like some forensic work going on here. <laughs> and uh, we tracked this to a click, right? Like this is all on... Uh, this is, yeah, it's 82 BPM. 82. I Man, think it... A static here, yeah, it doesn't change. Th- these are the cool bits here, yeah. these R's. Yeah. And these things always sound so weird by themselves when you put them into. Baby, I'm and like that coupled with the um, the B3. With the just, B3, yeah, really. Listen to them together, it. that's the texture that. The, all slowly and everything. And it's also that that chord holds in this section, where yeah. it actually changes in the original. The chords in the last chorus are so different. Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, that chord on love is, is really yeah. cool. That that came about by mistake, right? Because yeah, I, I, I remember it uh, quite clearly. Uh, yeah. Adil probably hit like the the five instead of the four. It's like a four minus six. It's a it's a this guy. Uh, yeah, it's um so. What key are you playing it in? Yes. Yeah, now you make that a then, minus. Six. And then it goes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one. <laughs> I still play it though. It kind of adds a, and I slow it down over there when I play it acoustically, just because it's, it's very, it's that melancholy, you know, like sounding. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like some sort of like they would either get it with their vocals or you know they they're always making these weird chords with the with the voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this case, I think we did your acoustic play it. Probably not. <laughs> I think it's only down on the keys. Oh, this is this is interesting. See, the B3 is playing a minor, and you And I'm playing the ma- you're playing a major. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, it's like an 
additional note to it, right? So I think it it still works. Like they all uh, combine together to form that that chord. Even the harmonies and all that. Really yeah, there's a lot going on there. I think the B3 is like the coolest part for of the, of the ending for sure. That's one thing that I really enjoyed. Uh, the other thing is last thing, right? We added, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because I can see he he probably these keys, which were I think Rhodes or something. Yeah, Rhodes. So I muted his Rhodes from this part onwards. Yeah, and, and it changes. Switch to B3. Yeah. So also your your twelve string is playing. You just kind of do, do a step up, and you're and you're playing that part over there. I just want to hear what you you're playing that, on that, that same chord. chord over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Ooh, baby, I'm playing though. I switched nice. to the minor. So if you put that together. Oh, that bass note is killing it. The That's so good. The bass is what makes the the chords. Better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That one is awesome. Yeah. Um, you said you uh, redid my vocal chain uh, from the original. Did you make yeah. any? Because I remember this very clearly. I was just like, man, Warren, I don't like my vocals. He's just like, this is your first album. You only get this much time to record your vocals. And I was just yeah. like, okay, cool. I guess this is what we're going with. But what did you do like uh, differently here? I, I think I, I didn't have some of the plugins that I use on the original session. So I had to redo uh -huh. it. Yeah. I was trying to sub them one by one and I was like, screw it. Let me just do it from scratch. So uh, just the DSO, I guess. Yeah. I think this was there originally that stayed. I then think we were using a the... SM7B to record the vocals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, because if we were tracking with you playing acoustic, that 7B would have been your your vocal mic. Yeah. And then there's this 1176 com compressor. I think we probably used the, the Waves version before. Yeah. And a uh, little bit of bump on the top. Uh, this mid, which kind of helps it cut through the... Rest and your voice does have a very strong low mid most of the time, so I've just taken off some. Good know. to know. <laughs> I think that is true, though. In, yeah. In this case, because I think this is like one of the the widest ranges of all your songs on the album, because you went from like really low notes at the start to. It like, is, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pushing it at the end, and then just a little bit of this nasalish honk which sometimes comes with a dynamic mic no i'm just saying if you use no no you're right and it's also i mean i i do i think my my range has just overall just changed it i do sound quite young in this <laughs> just mm. so that and uh, your vocal reverb uh, we just use good old Valhalla. classic there's a preset called Vocal Air, which just bring it up on, on a default setting, it seems to work. And then I just play with this DK time, depending on the song. Do you automate the reverb for the track, or is just that's like a general I guy? I think we just have a static yeah. send. Oh, hang on. Yeah, what automate? I think I'm automating your volume on this. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, that, that's it. That's all. the only automation I've got, is just pushing you up on the choruses, maybe. Yeah. Like as more layers come in, you need to just bump the voice up. Yeah, it's interesting that most of these songs, I think in the beginning, we didn't have a lot of DTs or like harmonies or anything like that. In the we just had like a, a stock a mono harmony for this. Came, Ruby, don't you abuse me? Do you know how? That's like closer to your original demo, I guess, of the yeah. song, right? Baby, I'm under your lightning and thunder. Or when the rest of the band misses the flight. There's also one. Uh, there's also one little vocal. Yeah, which is there, which is ducked really underneath the thing, which I can still hear on the original. Recording. I think it's yours. Oh, what's going on? Here? Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I can always hear it in the recording. Yeah. The motto is if it if it isn't broke, broken. Broken, yeah. <laughs> I know we definitely <laughs> spoke about changing some stuff and Warren's like, no man, it's fine. Just leave it. It's <laughs> it's cool. And I was like, all right, that checks What's out. What's the bit you wanted to change? I just want to remove the 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 baby before the second chorus. 
because there's a little bit of a gap and I don't sing it anymore like live and then everybody sings it and I'm just like, okay, cool. <laughs> I might as well just remove it. But it's like, if everyone's singing, then let them keep it. I'm like, fine. It's funny, fine. right? When you like lose a, a little bit of love for the things you've done and then <laughs> you still retain that love. And My God. Yeah, this song is, it epitomizes that. It's not like I don't, I, I, I love this song. I, I think it's still, it's done a lot for my career. And mm-hmm. uh, just generally also, wherever we go, there's, there's always somebody singing this song. Lots of dudes singing the song. Lots of dudes been hurt. <laughs> so, this is a classic story of the, the Bichara guy. Who's this is been, a classic, this is a friend zone song. <laughs> I guess. <been> done over. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I guess there's a lot of uh, uh, relevance still. Actually, but yeah, very, people... popular, very, very popular in engineering colleges, I guess. Yes, it is. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it really is. And uh, I, I remember uh, even the, the two times, I've, uh, uh, last two times I was in an NIT Silchar, play this, lots of guys. And then we did uh, Meghale Weekend. And mm-hmm. it, it, there's a clip on my highlights <laughs> from Weekend of last year. And the camera pans from us singing Ruby, and then it goes to the crowd. And it's just like these dudes going like, <laughs> it's like a lot of lot of like hurt like hurt boys out there but i i get it man it's it's all good um i, I know a lot of girls it does it does strike a chord <laughs> yeah i f minor <laughs> over a e flat or something but yeah um man this is cool dude uh, i i yeah i i still have very fond memories of of recording that album and and this is cool i am very grateful that you um decide to produce this and i mean like i had no business uh kind of uh making it like in a big way back then but i remember you did this one thing which was just like um it was such a casual drop which really kind of helped my career i think it was just like um we finished the album it dropped and then on the black side blues facebook page i think you were guys like hey guys i just dropped this uh i just i just produced this check it out it's fine <laughs> and everyone was like wait what and then especially i think zoran or something was asking uh, you were just like, hey man, just check out the guitars on <laughs> on until the end, and and then like I think everybody kind of just then just decided to check it out uh, after that. So so I'm very grateful. Until the, yeah, until the end was from the first album, right? Yeah, this this album, the same album. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The so, the police sounding guitar parts. I remember the, that, and yeah, then you obviously did the the police stuff on I Can Be the Night on the second yeah. album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe one day we we'll get into that. That's the one with that long solo, right? On your yeah, second yeah. one. Yeah, with the mm. fade out, my only fade out song. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but yeah, cool. This is amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Warren, for for going through and just like redoing this track. Um, my pleasure. It brought back a lot of me- good memories to listen to it again. So um, yeah, the cotton press that. days. Yeah. yeah so, well, okay. I'll very quickly tell tell you like the best thing about cotton press was the vibe. And the worst thing about that was getting there. It was literally the everything. Else. Community from the suburb was like legendary. Yeah. It was for those who don't know. It was like underneath Elphinstone like bridge, and bridge. Uh, so there was a obviously there's a like platform close by, but none of that was important. That bridge became a bottleneck, and to get off that bridge to get to the studio, you had to do this crazy U-turn. <laughs> like go like one kilometer ahead. Oh, or you go one kilometer ahead yeah all the cops are there and then you can't do it but otherwise people yeah, would do this like you like don't and like everyone <laughs> would like abuse you for like you know like for the five minutes you're attempting that and then you get it but yeah but otherwise yeah of course the vibes were excellent and we well, have lots this of one time after recording a black star blues album they like, packed up all our gear everything and it's raining uh, yeah. and they refused to let us bring the car into the lane because they were playing garba there and they said no no you, while we're playing garba you can't bring your cars like <laughs> oh, god. my god yeah there's so much of that the uber Those guy would crazy. go somewhere else oh my gosh it was it was good it was good time but uh, and i don't know if this was the time where they had like the leak happening and so we had to move the entire station to the outside yeah, the, i'm not uh, the control room and the studio were actually in the same acoustic space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so we you had know, to move the control room. control room. Yeah, we had to, they shut that down, I think, because of the leak. And it, it, this was recorded like in the full throes of the monsoons and stuff. So I remember that just that period of time, I had moved to Krish's house to just stay there so that it would be easy for me to record. Otherwise, coming from Andheri, I would have died. I said. Yeah. But, but yeah, good, uh, good times and, and, and still, I hope, a good song. So, um, so uh, we're also releasing 
uh, the remixed, and when we say remix, don't think like DJ something. This is not DJ Warren remix. <laughs> this is just an actual remix of the original uh, tracks and um, and a remaster. And uh, we're going to be putting out on the uh, anniversary of Small Victories. And we have Warren to thank for that. So thanks, Warren, for, for giving this chill remix for it. And it's sounding better than ever, I think. And um, And yeah, we're just happy to put it out just as a as for fun and for everybody to remember that time and for me also just generally and for everybody who was involved. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, thanks a lot, Warren. Um, generally, this is uh, cool. And if you guys like any of these kinds of like production, breakdown things, uh, let me know what other songs you want to do in the comments, like share, subscribe. Uh, you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Thanks a lot guys. Thanks Warren. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks man. See you.